Hello everyone, I'm Only Jax, and what's up brothers? We're talking about Sketch. I'm gonna give you a recap of uh, what's going on, but if you read the title, I kind of assume that you know what's going on with Sketch, and um, this whole thing makes me sick to my stomach, and we're gonna talk about why. But first, a quick recap. 70,000? God damn, where were y'all before? Fuck! Sketch was outed yesterday as, at some point in his past, being a gay, cross-dressing OnlyFans content creator. Sketch has maintained a pretty family-friendly image in his time on Twitch, and overall seems like a really good guy and a very, very uh, entertaining Twitch streamer. I've been known to enjoy some uh, clips of Sketch here on TikTok and Instagram, a little Sketch Comp on YouTube. Tuesday, Tuesday, special team spe What's up, brother? I love it, I love it all. Yesterday, a YouTuber by the name of Pocketbook created a video wherein he dug up years old videos of Sketch under a different screen name that depicted Sketch doing various sexual acts with several other men in different femboy outfits. Sketch was pretty quiet all day on social media until he went live on Twitch with his Sketch of the Union stream. I thought that, oh, that was a pretty clever name. If you ask me, that was a pretty clever name. Sketch overall was a class act about all of this um admitting it was him in the videos like the 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 guy who did the the original video the guy nailed it that was that was sketch there is no rumor there is no inaccuracy that was sketch look at this open and honest that was me that was me it's okay though i will tell you what okay Sketch also cracked a bunch of jokes in uh, sketch fashion during this whole thing and kept it, it got kind of dark, but he kept it pretty light. I did not have sexual relations with that man. I'm just kidding. I did. Possibly. Hey, love my brother Jigsy. Not like that, though. Just my brother. Weight off my shoulders, to be honest. You have some stuff in the closet. No pun intended there. But, um... Overall, the way he's handling this so far is grade A second to none like he is handling this i think in a very mature i did it so what type way but not so much so what because at one point during the video he does allude to himself well he does say that he knew this would come out eventually and he said that his options were either to quit or do something that alludes to sketch no longer being with us too early in the video for me to say the s word but you know what i mean i'll be honest plan a was and I will say candidly, was to probably eat a, eat up, well, probably to call it quits if this ever came out. But some people saved me. Shout out Banks. Shout out my parents. Like, shout out y'all. Like, I fucked up, but I'm changed. Um, yeah, that's about it, though. My, my original plan was there's two things. One, either be delusional and think it's never going to come out. Or two, what's the plan after? The plan after was not very good. If I was alone and I was at my house, I probably wouldn't be talking to you right now. Uh, but I will say God is good. Sketch is still with us and Sketch isn't watching this. But I think all of us need to be sending him good vibes right now because none of this was okay. None of this was needed. We're going to talk about the video now. We're going to talk about the original video. We're going to break down the original video because I know that's what you fuckers came for. That's what you guys come to expect from me. Seeing shit that I think is obviously reprehensible and making a video about it. I'm heated. If you can't tell, I'm heated. So first, let me say, in an effort to be humble, uh, that my takes here could be completely wrong. I'm not a journalist, and I'm not some person who should be taken seriously as far as someone to look up to as a moral influence or for moral guidance. I have takes that I think are good. I think that my takes may be valuable to some, and that's what I intend to do with the platform that I have. Now, with that said, what's up, brothers? I have a few takes on this uh, Sketch Exposed video that I would like to share. Overall, I think... Pocketbook's video was done in extremely bad taste. I'm gonna play a minimal part of the video here, but all you need to know about this video, it's some kid who went to journalism school, made a whole video where he digs up the old stuff of Sketch doing sexual stuff, 
and then uh, compares it to Sketch as we know him today, making the similarity, saying, hey, this is the same guy. And then after saying Sketch did this thing in the past, he makes the connection between sex workers and actors and performers uh, to try to make it like, this is why he made the video, to draw the connection. Like, why does this keep happening? But I want to come back to Pocketbook says he went to school for journalism, and here's what he had to say about that. However, I did go to school for journalism. In NJ school, they taught us if a story meets the standards of timeliness, proximity, interest, controversy, sensationalism, prominence, and novelty, according to Shoemaker et al. 1987, it is newsworthy, and it needs to be shared with the public. Now, the newsworthy definition, according to Merriam-Webster, is anything interesting enough to the general public to warrant reporting. So was this sketch story newsworthy? Was it interesting enough to the general public? Yes. But newsworthy does not equal a responsibility to report. Pocketbook in your focus to create something newsworthy, it seems as if you had complete and utter disregard for the ethics behind this. Like I said, he goes on in the video to show Sketch's old sex worker profiles and draws the similarities between the person in the profiles and Sketch in real life. Hindsight is 2020. we know this is Sketch. Yeah, that was me. Um, I fucked up. I won't do it again. And then it's after this he makes the connection between sex workers and entertainers, drawing a conclusion that goes back as far as ancient times. And to his point, yes, at one time, sex workers and entertainers were often one and the same thing. I will also agree that sex work and entertainment performers, it's a form of quite literally selling your body for someone else's pleasure. Having said that, if drawing the point that sex work and entertaining go hand in hand, which it wasn't, um, but this point is, I would say, much better captured by using an example such as Kim Kardashian, Tommy Lee and Pamela Anderson, Farrah Abraham, Tila Tequila, the list goes on. Using Sketch for your example of this is, at best, a stretch, and at worst, it's wildly irresponsible journalism. Simply put, there was just no need to put this out there, dude. Like, and risk ruining someone's career for what? For clicks? For clicks. You want to be a BuzzFeed? This is BuzzFeed journalism is what it is. Now, I am not a journalist. I did not go to journalism school. However, I do own a computer, and I know how to use the Google. And I found this interesting bit from the Society of Professional Journalists uh, and their code of ethics. I want to focus on a few selections from their minimizing harm section. It says, ethical journalism treats sources, subjects, colleagues, and members of the public as human beings deserving of respect. Journalists should Balance the public's need for information against potential harm or discomfort. Pursuit of the news is not a license for arrogance and undue intrusiveness. I want to say digging up someone's past and that, that they've clearly tried to distance themselves from and seemingly in no way represents who they are today uh, seems a little like undue intrusiveness. Yes, you say the information is publicly available there and you didn't like hack into his personal life to find any of this stuff but let's let's put this on the scales public need to know that sketch had this questionable past questionable to some like personally i don't have a problem with it he did this thing that i mean i'm not watching uh but I, it doesn't bother me does it tarnish his family friendly image yes was he doing both of these things at the same time no did he seem to promote this past thing of his no Anyway, they also say, consider the long-term implications of the extended reach and permanence of this publication. It's not going anywhere. Sketch learned the hard way that once something's on the internet, it's there forever. And I have a feeling that uh, in the days to come, in the weeks to come, you're going to be very upset that this video exists on the internet forever. This whole thing is a very in praise of shadows type gotcha video that uh, I feel personally you're going to come to regret. You, sir, did not seem to correctly balance the need for the public to know this information against the potential harm it could do. You literally had Sketch in tears alluding to being at risk of suicide. You did that. This would be different if Sketch had done something awful. Sketch committed zero crimes, was putting zero people at risk, and seemed to have zero intent on revisiting, promoting, reliving this part of his life. And that conclusion can be drawn just based on your research. Now, when you follow the link to Twitter, fortunately, or unfortunately, however you want to slice this, the account has been scrubbed from the internet. 
In fact, most things associated with Jamie Marr have been scrubbed for the internet, or at least attempted to have been scrubbed from the internet. Furthermore, it seems as if you've considered the long-term effects of this, and all you had to say was, in essence, I'm curious to see how this plays out. I'm curious to see how this plays out, brothers. This'll be interesting. Like, what the fuck, man? In fact, I would love to see Kylie Cox actually stand on this and um, use it as a, as a learning experience, a teaching experience, a way to enrich and deepen his um, presence online and his, his partnerships. And I'd love to see how his partnerships respond. You know, do the Texans continue to lean in, in, into him? Do Kai Sinat and AMP continue to lean into him? Will Fortnite lean into him? Or will we all shy away and, and say this is um, not brand safe? Um, I guess time will tell. I haven't watched the rest of your content, and I certainly am not going to be giving you the watch time to figure out if you're just a crappy journalist altogether. But I can say in 100% good faith that this was a crappy tabloid piece of media that did not serve the public good, did not provide voice to the voiceless, and only served to boost your numbers as a content creator. And I think that you knew all this. I really do. I think you knew this was a bad idea, and that's why you tried to hide behind someone's definition of newsworthy in order to justify this exploitative, sensationalist, tabloid, yellow press piece of journalistic garbage. I will say it's also interesting to me how you used advertiser-friendly language for all of this. I have no grounds to say this, but to me it puts a very, very uh feeling in my stomach that you were using advertiser-friendly language during all of this, because if this were true journalism, you're getting, you're, you're getting information out, you're giving power to the people, um, I feel like you would just say it like it is, and not, um, I don't know, not use advertiser-friendly language. I just thought that was interesting. Now, I could be a hypocrite. One day, I'm, I will be monetized, and I may also use advertiser-friendly language. Um, but I also don't think I'm going to find something of someone's past that literally harms no one but the person it involves and, uh, try to get publicity off of it. You know, dude, all publicity is publicity, but I have a gut feeling that this is, uh, not the publicity you wanted to attract. One, one, one comment says at best, uh, seven years of YouTube and you finally thought you struck gold. Uh, well, let me tell you, Pocketbook, I have a feeling you shook fool's gold here, and uh, I do not wish your channel the best. I wish you the best as a person. I wish you the best in continuing to become a uh, better, more ethical journalist, but I do hope, I, I do not wish your platform the best. I think this was a wild miscarriage of journalistic responsibility, and uh, no justice was served, no public good has been served, and I think that if this is a... Uh, example of who you are as a person and how you think is okay to interact in a journalistic standpoint. I think from a journalist perspective, the uh, world of journalism and news media was going to do just fine without you. But that's all I had to say. I'll do a live stream where I go through this point by point. I'm, I'm sure at some point I'll cut that down to be a follow-up video, but um, oh boy, dude, like I literally learned about this at 8 a.m. this morning, made me sick to my stomach, uh, waited to say anything on it. Sorry, the only thing I said on it was on Twitter. I had said, I had tweeted, you'll never believe I just saw this thing and the guy looks exactly like Sketch. That's what I said. I thought that was pretty funny. Um, I'm glad I waited until I watched what Sketch had to say about this. I think what you have done here, Pocketbook, is a overall bad thing. There is bad karma attached to this. Um, I hope that some sense of a moral compass is put into your heart uh, and that for the next video you make, your heart is in the right place and you do not make such wildly irresponsible content in the future. But that's it for me. I've been Only Jax and you made it to the end of the video. You should subscribe or maybe just leave a like, leave a comment if you please. But I'd rather you subscribe. I check that shit like every day and when that subscriber number goes up. Well, my heart goes up to the sky when you do subscribe.